Hey, welcome back to Dad's office. So, in the last video, there was a little bit of a tease talking about the next one will be on tomahawks. Well, here we are. Um, don't have a lot of tomahawks, but as you can see, I've got five. And they won't all fit on this little mat, of course. But, we'll go through them. Anyway, so we'll start with what is here. This is going to be the Cold Steel Trailhawk. It's going to have 1055 carbon steel. Actually, all these tomahawks are 1055 carbon. Um, this is the one I showed in the last video. Uh, the handle, as you can see, is going to be a little bit different. This is what your factory handle is going to look like. So what I did on this one is I took my torch. Well, I sanded it first because it's got a really thin polyurethane coat on it. So you have to sand that off. So I sanded that off and then took my torch and kind of didn't hit it real heavy but you know just kind of variation of a pattern kind of you know just to give it kind of an antique kind of look and then I rubbed it down with boiled linseed oil I think I did two or three coats on this one I can't really remember but the funny thing is, uh, these CRKT tomahawks, which unfortunately I have them pretty much all the way wrapped up so you really can't see, but they've kind of done the same thing from the factory. They just put a lot more polyurethane on it after the fact, which I didn't put any kind of clear over this. I kind of like it the way it is, and it does feel good. Um, Honestly, though, after after you put your first coat of linseed on it, it might not hurt to run over it with a really fine sandpaper because the linseed oil does kind of expand the wood and it does kind of bring up little, uh, maybe would call them splinters. You, maybe you could get splinters if you're not too careful with it because it does kind of raise it a little bit. Um, so on the Trailhawk here, it's got, let's see what kind of head that is. That looks like about a two and a quarter, I would imagine, two and a quarter inch cutting head, which is pretty small. Um, also have the hammer pommel on the back, which is, I'd say, about three quarters of an inch. Yeah, hair over. Hair over three, right, right around three quarters of an inch. Um, now these, I ordered from Amazon. Well, this one I did not order from Amazon. These two I ordered from Amazon. Um, I got them, I don't know, a month or two ago. And they were a lot cheaper than they are now. Right now on Amazon, these things range from like 32 to 37 dollars for these cold steels and when I got them I, I only paid like 20 so I don't know if it's due to what's going on you know that prices are higher or if, you know I just caught them on sale I don't know but at any rate I'm sure glad I got them for a lot less um, another thing about these cold steels that I'm not wild about they have right here a set screw and that set screw screws down into the handle and that's to lock the head on the handle. Well, traditionally a tomahawk is not supposed to be screwed to the handle. It is supposed to be a friction fit tool. That way you can, that way you can take the head off and as you see there's the hole from the set screw. But they do that so you can take the head off, you know, and you can use the head separately from the handle. 
And it also makes it nice if, you know, you do want to put this in a pack. This would be a lot easier to pack than this, in my opinion. Um, another thing about these cold steel tomahawks, these are made in Taiwan. And they're actually made by, as you can see, the stickers on these two, because I didn't remove them yet. Um, they're made by American Tomahawk Company in Taiwan, made for cold steel. Um, they are actually very good tomahawks, though, even being they are um, made in Taiwan. However, they're not perfect. Um, this one here we actually use for throwing. That's why it's kind of all beat up and banged up the way it is. But when they pressure fit these heads on, they pressed them on. And as you can see, that caused all this wood to roll up, which it shouldn't do. And a lot of that, I think, is due to the taper in the head. They are tapered, but I don't know that they're tapered quite enough. Um, this one actually ended up not being too bad, but I've heard of a lot of people where it had a lot of, uh, like, slag dots, I guess I would call it. I don't know, little nubs inside there, and they would have to take a file and clean those out and then re-blue inside. Um, I didn't do that on this one. I'm not going to. It's pretty clear in there. I mean, it's good enough for me. Now, you'll notice these do kind of have different finishes on them. And, you know, I don't really know why that is. Um, like I said, I, I bought this one at a store separately from the other two, so I don't know if maybe this is an older design with the kind of heavier shiny coat or if this is the old design and this is the new design I don't really know I guess I should have researched that a little bit before uh, jumping right into this but oh well so this one here this is gonna be the cold steel pipe hawk which there you can see Taiwan but yeah this one's the pipe hawk it's it's designed after a traditional Native American tomahawk with the pipe. Um, however, this one does not have a functional pipe. It's a faux pipe. It's, it's actually a hammer pole. It's just made to look like a pipe. So these two tomahawks are pretty much the same in essence, other than this one, of course, has a larger cutting head. Which that one's got a this one here's got about a three inch cutting head on it. So as you can see, quite a bit bigger there. And an, another actually another drawback to any of these tomahawks, which you know I'm sure if you got the high dollar real high end tomahawks, it wouldn't necessarily be a problem. But these don't come real sharp. Uh, they're probably sharp enough. You know, I mean, beans is they're an impact tool. They don't need to be razor sharp, but they could definitely go for a sharpening. Um, I uh, put a little bit of an edge on this one right here. It's not super sharp, but it's not too shabby. Yeah, it won't shave. Not bad, though. So, moving along here. So, yeah, since we threw this one, you can see where the head has actually came down and kind of really chewed that up. And look, there's even a trench right there from the set screw. So, this handle's really in pretty bad shape, but... Like I said, it's for throwing, and I've actually got two more spare handles for these that look just like this one. So, not too big of a deal there. I bought it, you know, with the intention of throwing it. Actually, I'm not the one that's throwing it. It's my wife that likes throwing them. I do too, but she, uh, she was the one that really wanted to do it, so I obliged her. This... 
is the Cold Steel Spike Hawk. And I think out of all the Cold Steel Hawks that I have here, I think this one's my favorite out of all of them. I would say that these two would probably be the more functional, but I mean, I guess it would def depend if you were talking a defense situation, this one would probably be better due to the spike. If you're talking a all around situation, you know, camping or, you know, even say survival type situation, I'm sure the ones with the hammers would be better just because you can hammer tent stakes or break things open or whatever you might need to do um, with that. So this one here, it has also right around a three inch, three inch cutting head on it. And looks like the spike here is gonna actually be about three inches as well. Um, again, it's sharp, but I mean, you can push on it pretty hard, but it, it, it hurts, but. I don't know what else really there is to be said about this. I mean, it's a tomahawk. I mean, they they split okay, as long as you're not trying to do anything super, super big. I mean, they do have somewhat of a fairly decent profile on them. So, I mean, they bite in real good. They bite great, as long as you're not trying to, like I say, split anything too big. They work out pretty good. Move some of this out of the way. Now then, so those were the cold steels. Now, moving right along, these are the CRKT. This one is called the Woods Kanji, and it's going to feature the spike as well as, of course, the cutting head, which on this one is right about the same three inches. This one might even be at three and a quarter. And the spike on this one looks like it's also going to be around the same three inch mark. Now on this one I opted to use the hockey tape which I really do like this hockey tape. It really does anything you put it on. Whether it's a knife or a hammer, a tomahawk you know, a spear, which I've got a few of those. It doesn't matter what you put it on, it feels so much better. It gives it, you know, a little more grip, but a little bit of cushion too at the same time. Um, and it alleviates the splinter problem. I went ahead and went with a paracord wrap at the top. Um, mainly because I like the look of it. But two, secondly, it does help to protect the handle against an overstrike. So, you know, that being said, like if this was your wood that you were trying to chop here, you know, if you were to go a little bit ahead of it and miss and hit your handle, that's called an overstrike. So that would help to protect your handle from breaking. So without this paracord wrap on, and it might be able to slip over this hockey tape. I don't know if it would or not, but without that on there, as you can see, the CRKT is strictly pressure fit. They didn't put any kind of, you know, set screw or anything like that in it, which is great. And also you can see it's got the notch notched out here, so that way, you know, when you do grab it, you can use it for other things but, but yeah that's that again like I said the 1055 just like the others I like this one it's it's much much nicer than the cold steels and as of right now as of the taping of this video these are going on Amazon for a ride at like $39, which that is a pretty good deal, I think, for these, considering these cold steels are 
like I said, 32 to 37, something like that. And these CRKTs are much, much bigger and thicker and heavier. Or actually, let's go ahead and compare this one to the Spike Hawk. Because that would be Cold Steel's closest to it. So, as you can see there... So about the same length on the cutting head. The overall head length is going to be about the same. But obviously, I mean, you can see that the cold steel is not as beefy as the CRKT by far. So that's a, that's a nice one there. And it does come... Eh, I mean, I wouldn't call it sharp, but... I mean, it would, it sinks into wood, you know, so it would cut or chop wood, but, I mean, you're not, not going to do anything too wild with it. Oh, and for the kanji, I do have the CRKT leather sheath produced by them, which is actually a top-notch quality sheath. I think they're about $20, $25, something like that. Um... Nice accessory. And of course, I've got it all uh, lubed up with the Obanoff oil. And one nice thing, which I wasn't sure of, but it will still snap around it, even with the paracord wrap. Very nice. It's going to have a pass through belt loop here as well as an extra set of lash holes here. So that way if you were to say attach it to a pack or something else you could use those holes to also attach it to the pack or just to run an extra security tie around this but pretty nice uh, pretty nice setup there. I kind of like that. That looks pretty pretty good I think. Pretty good. Definitely uh, a little bit better than the cold steel so that's that and lastly on the list another CRKT this one is gonna be the woods Chogan now I've done the same thing the hockey tape the paracord wrap um, basically same same deal as the other one, same handle, um, just going to have a different cutting head on it. Now on this one, it does have the hammer pull, as well as it does have the cutout here to where if you were to take the head off, you can use this as a hand tool, you know, with various different grips. Now, this one, however, I did put an edge on. And this one is ridiculously sharp. I definitely am not going to run my fingers down this one. Um, also, it has an unsharpened swedge here, which, you know, is uh, intended for penetration. And again, I sharpened this one because of this one is going to be your more useful tomahawk in my opinion with the hammer on it um, yeah the spike would be good for breaching or something like that but I've never had to breach a door that uh, a foot wouldn't open so I don't think I necessarily need it however if I do I've got it I've got the option so there is that. Uh, this one, it might. We can let's see what we got here. Uh, yeah, I don't know. If you can uh, see that or not, that would be hair. Yeah, this one's this one's really sharp. I went over it. Um, 
I put it on my Ken Onion Work Sharp with the blade grinder attachment um, and sharpened it up real good. Went through all the belts, of course, and then after that, I went ahead and hand stropped it. Um, probably totally unnecessary. I don't know how well and how long it would hold that edge, but I just mainly wanted to do it just to see if I could. And you can, I mean, you can easily raise a shaving edge on there, which, you know, for a tomahawk is just not necessary at all, but it's fun anyway. So this one, you know, we could compare to the trail hawk, um, but you know, massive difference in cutting heads on that. This is just going to be a lot smaller of a tomahawk. You know, and this one, the cold steel, you're going to be looking at almost the same cost as this CRKT here, but it's probably most similar to the pipe hawk. See, it's going to be very similar size cutting head. The hammer pawl is pretty well similar in size. Now here's where they're really gonna differ. Just like before, the CRKT is big and hefty. Much bigger, much thicker. However, they are both, you know, the same steel, 1055. And I'm not sure, I should have looked, but I'm not sure where the uh, CRKTs are produced. They don't, uh, they don't have it stamped on it. I should have looked it up. But at any rate, so pretty well wrapping it up here. What I would do, if you're looking for a tomahawk and you don't have one yet, you know, you're looking for your first tomahawk, um, there's absolutely nothing wrong with the cold steels. They're very good tomahawk. However, for the money, for what you're going to be spending on the tomahawk, I think I would spend just a little bit more and go ahead and go with the CRKTs. Now... There is another thing to that. Um, of course, the CRKTs are going to be heavier than the uh, cold steels are. So there's that too. I mean, if you're looking for a lighter weight option that'll still get the work done, the cold steel won't let you down. And, of course, both companies, they're going to come with a warranty. So, I mean, if you're using it and you break it, which I've never heard of happening, but maybe it will you know I'm sure they'll take care of you so I've, I've never had to warranty anything with either company but I've never heard anything bad either so there is always that so you know yeah in closing I mean I think I would spend my money on the CRKT I think is what I would I would spend my money on and CRKT does actually offer uh, the leather sheath for the woods chogan as well and they also have a few other varieties of tomahawks you can get like the frontier hawk i believe it's called or that might be the cold steel i don't remember but anyway you can get it without the hammer just the head on it like that um and some other axes and tomahawks and everything else but crkt's definitely pretty good i do believe um Got a pretty decent coating on it, actually, I think. It uh, seems, to, seems to be pretty decent anyway. So, I don't know what else, uh, what else I could really tell you about that. So, I mean, if you do have any questions, of course, uh, throw them down there in the comments, and we'll get that took care of. And subscribe, if you wouldn't mind, I'd appreciate it. And I'd kind of like to do maybe uh, a subscriber giveaway. Maybe when we get to, say, 20, go ahead and uh, pick somebody at random and give something away. 
Don't know uh, what it'll be yet. I've got something in mind, but uh, I think we'll keep that a surprise until uh, till the lucky winner receives it, and then uh, then we'll put the video out of it after after they've got it. So that way, it's a true surprise. That's the fun of it. So. All right, folks. Well, as always, thanks for stopping by. I hope you have a blessed day, and we'll see you in the next one.